70% of the population in Africa is below the age of 35. For the continent to achieve its sustainable development goal by 2030, the youth ought to be empowered, skilled, and financially included. CNBC Africa's George Ndurango got a chance to speak to a Benjamin Fernandez, one of Tanzania's young budding entrepreneurs, and a Stanford fellow on the importance of empowering the youth. Take a look. So Tanzania is my home, my land, my love, the place I want to spend the rest of my life. And I've said that to many uh, people, and I, I something I firmly believe and hold on to. When I finished undergrad, I made it, uh, I did my bachelor's in the United States. I made it a firm priority to come back immediately after my undergrad. Now, a lot of my fellow African friends looked at me like, yo, why are you coming back to Tanzania? Did you fail in America? Did you not do well? Um, and they started to question my instinct of why I was choosing to come back home. The reason why I look back and say that the reason I chose to come home is because I felt indebted. I felt indebted to my community, I felt indebted to my people. In Tanzania, there's a small population of people who actually are fortunate enough to get the opportunity to study abroad. And I felt that I was being entrusted by that opportunity. And the fact that I was being entrusted by this opportunity was the reason why I felt I needed to find a way to give back. And that was why I said, okay, I might not be making as much money as I would be working in the United States. I want to come back to help develop the young generation because 67% of Tanzanians are under the age of 24. So if you're 25 years old, then 70% of the population, of 53 million people, that's a lot of people. And so if there's nobody training this human capacity development for these young people, who is going to be running the country in a few years? You have this whole young generation, a lot of them who might be uneducated or form six or form four dropouts, and you have this huge opportunity for them to grow and learn and change the country in many positive ways. And so my commitment after Stanford is saying, hey, I do want to go back. I do want to help my country in many ways that I can, especially through um, economic empowerment uh, to the bottom of the pyramid, those people in the rural regions. 76% of Tanzanians live in the rural regions, and there's a lot of uh, people out there who don't have access to many people, uh, many things that people in the cities or the urban areas do have access to. And figuring out ways to develop socioeconomic um, uh, solutions to those pressing problems uh, is one of my dreams that I hope to achieve uh, after Stanford. All right, finally, let's talk more on financial inclusion. Uh, you've touched that uh, at least uh, you have a, you're more inclined to do that when you come back. Uh, you mentioned 76 percent of the rural uh, population, but we also have uh, a huge population of that well within the lower to the lower middle class income. From your perspective, we know it's hard to tackle it both on a micro and macro level. We're tackling financial inclusion within those two tiers, how do you intend to do that when you come back? So I think financial inclusion is super exciting, and, and I have to be biased. I have to say Tanzania is the most exciting t country in East Africa for financial inclusion. The reason I say this is because um, of the variation of players in the market. We have several mobile network operators that share a decent amount of the market share of mobile money, whereas it, other countries like Kenya, you have Safaricom that dominates the market share and carries more of a monopoly over there. Whereas in Tanzania, you have four players or five players who share a decent amount of market share, which allows um, a lot of uh, opportunities for development of new solutions, such as financial inclusion solutions. What do I mean by that? So let's take a look at Tanzania. 53 million people, 67% are registered mobile users. Of the 67% who are registered mobile users, 83% of them use mobile money as their prime source of transferring wealth. More than half of our yearly GDP is exchanged over mobile money. And that fact itself should make you think and consider, wow, so many people are using or utilizing the service. So there's so much data there. Benjamin spends X amount, Benjamin earns X amount. You know, we're paid through mobile money. So Accessing a way to identify how much somebody spends, how much they earn, and figuring out an algorithm to calculate a default risk for that, and providing financial loans from there is a way you can tackle the bottom of the pyramid by empowering them and helping the people across get money to do what they want to do, whether it's business, whether it's agribusiness, whether it's insurance, whether it's health. There's a lot of solutions that could be developed and prepared just from mobile money. All right. Now, given that, I had to ask uh, before I let you go. Uh, now, the government has crea created a, a portfolio. We've moved around in Tanzania. The portfolio has been broadened. We're talking about pensions, uh, uh, stocks are now people more engaging a lot more. We're seeing a lot of diversity in terms of wealth creation. But how much of that do the people within our demographic actually know? Do we know? Do we know what's happening? Do we know the portfolio that's available for us to invest? I think there's a lot of opportunities that are available for local Tanzanians that a lot of people aren't informed by. So whether the question is whether they're informed or whether they, they know about it. Because like, there are many solutions that are available. For example, TASAF, uh, Tanzania, um, it's their social fund. Basically, they, it's a graduation program for young people or low-income families to get paid um, you know, to send their children to school. And once they graduate, they get paid about, I think it's about $40 every two months. 
um, and so 40,000 shillings every two months. And once they, they get paid this month, it's for these local people to take access uh, and to reach out and take access of these opportunities available for them. So programs like that aren't well advertised or well heard of. So if you go to a rural region, not everybody has heard of a program like TASAF, but that's available. And matter of fact, six million people have been using TASAF. Did you know that? Not many people do. And so $1.1 million has already been distributed by TASAF within Tanzania. And so looking at solutions like that that are already provided by the government or with organizations that are working with the government, the question is, are they available versus do people actually know about it? That's what I would throw back to them.